The Son of Dracula was a 1943 black and white universal monster movie. And this one was interesting. And that this is the first time I've seen Lon Chaney Jr. star in the title role as Dracula. And to be honest, I love Lon Chaney Jr. as the Wolfman and even as the Mummy. But this one didn't really work for me. You know, especially the mustache. Seriously? Now, don't get me wrong. He's a great actor in these old Universal monster classics. But he just didn't feel right to me as Dracula here. But basically, the story is that his character shows up in the United States as this Hungarian character, Count Alucard. He's been invited by Catherine Caldwell, who's played by Louise Albatron, and her character is basically the daughter of this New Orleans plantation owner, Colonel Caldwell, who's played by Georgia Irving. So, shortly after the Count shows up in town, the Colonel dies of mysterious circumstances, and we kind of quickly move into the division of his estate, and his wealth goes out to two daughters, with the one daughter, Claire Caldwell, who is played by Evelyn Ankers. She was also in the Wolfman film with Lon Chaney, and she receives all the money of the estate. But meanwhile, this other daughter, Catherine, gets his estate at Dark Oaks. Ooh. So the character, Catherine, is a little bit on the dark side, and she has been secretly dating this mysterious Count Alucard. And eventually they rush off to this quick, like a Justice of the Peace wedding, much to the alarm of her longtime boyfriend, Frank Stanley, who's played by Robert Page. So Frank, you know, goes off to confront both of them, you know, with this what the heck is going on attitude. And he even tries to shoot this Count Alucard guy. But the bullets pass right through him. Come on, you can't shoot a vampire. And they shoot through him and hit Catherine and thinks he's killed her. So he like flips out. Frank runs off. He goes to town. He tells his friend, uh, this Dr. Harry Brewster character played by Frank Craven. And you know, he turns himself into the police. So eventually the story progresses. This character, Professor Laszlo, shows up, played by J. Edward Bromberg. And he was an interesting character because he's also Hungarian, and he thinks something fishy is going on related to that pesky Dracula. And, you know, here's the thing. I like the Professor Laszlo. I love it when you get the, the person shows up who believes something crazy with vampires going on. But he didn't quite have the same character and drive as, say, the Van Helsing character from the original Dracula, as amazingly played by Edward Van Sloan. And, you know, that guy was awesome, and he knew his stuff. And this Professor Laszlo, he works, but he doesn't quite have that same drive and dedication, I felt, like Van Sloan. So that take that for whatever it's worth. I mean... Nobody really stood out in this film to me. I mean, Lon Chaney Jr., yes, he's still great as the vampire. It's just not his greatest role. And everybody else was just sort of there to me. I hate to, you know, put a negative spin, but that was just kind of my takeaway from this one. So, back to the story. This Professor Laszlo shows up. He's kind of figured out something's going on with the vampire. Catherine, the vampire character, meanwhile because she's transformed thanks to, you know, Alucard's naughtiness. He, she turns into a bat and enters Frank's cell and tells him that she still loves him and that she plans to betray Alucard and just wants to share immortality with Frank. And, you know, Frank's just kind of like flipping out, like, what in the world are you talking about? It's an interesting twist. And, you know, from this point on, things really start to pick up. I don't want to give away too much more, but... You know, they kind of converge on this Alucard guy, and, well, you can kind of predict what's going to happen. Now, some final thoughts. This is, I believe, the first Dracula film that's sort of set in the United States. And, you know, setting it around, like, the South and plantations and so on, I, I guess it didn't really work as much for me. I love those, you know those mystical Eastern European locations with the castles and so on. So this one was a little bit different in that regard. And it's also one to not feature the Dracula character necessarily, but rather his son. And they don't really go into a lot of detail about that. Like, 
wait, when did Dracula have a son? What's the deal? Where's the father? I, I don't know. And it kind of leaves you questioning what the story is. It's just sort of, boom, here's Alucard. He's the son of Dracula, I guess. So again, I love Lon Chaney in these movies. Maybe not so much here. I did like the effect that they built in with the bat to human transformation with a little bit of like an animation involved. And that was kind of cool. And also the Count's ability to transform into steam to sort of move around that way. And the ending of the film is pretty exciting. And you know, people start figuring out what's going on and they start cracking down on the Count. But I'm not going to give away much more. And that's The Son of Dracula. This was an interesting chapter of the Dracula Universal Monster series. And even with its issues, it's still worth checking out. <laughs>